if you think that the upcoming election is about Trump versus Biden or Trump and Newsom, it's not. It is literally about saving this country. Welcome to the Bedros Coolian Show. Hey, if the votes came down today, would you be voting for Biden or Trump? I'd love to know in the comment section below if you're watching this on YouTube. Hey, welcome to the Bedros Koulian Show. My name is Bedros Koulian, and today I want to talk to you about what is taking place in the United States. And listen, you would have to be blind and functionally retarded to not know what is taking place in the United States. And we are slowly losing our country. And I know I'm always talking about building yourself up, becoming the 2.0 self, becoming the man or woman that that is the hero of the story being the 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 lead actor or actress in your story but guess what that lead hero of the story is someone who is the foundation of this country because every single one of you and every single one of us in here are the byproduct of what this country is. And I think this country might be going to hell in a handbasket and I wanna address it, I wanna talk about it because in November, we are about to have a big election. And that election might be between Biden or Trump. That election very well might be between Gavin Newsom and Trump because they may very well find Biden incompetent for all the obvious reasons and end up putting either, well, Gavin Newsom or Kamala Harris on the Democratic ticket. But if you think that this election is about Biden or Trump or Newsom or Trump or even Harris or Trump, it's really not. This election is about more than that. And I'm here to tell you what may happen if we continue to vote with our emotions and with our feelings instead of our brains, instead of common sense. See, here's what's been happening in the country for some time now. We are under the impression that the leader of our country should be a shining example of humanity. And guess what? In an idealistic world, that would be the case, wouldn't it? The leader of our country, the president, would be a shining example of great humanity. He would have a great ethos, a great moral compass, great character, integrity, core values, all of that. We would all point to our sons and daughters and say, there's a great leader, emulate that person, be like that person. The reality is, if you look at historically, the type of people who run for office as president of the United States, most of them are egotistical and have some level of some sociopathic behavior, meaning they want power, they want power. Now, the harsh reality is that we as citizens want to put them in power because we want to put someone in power who can guide our great country to a place of abundance and sovereignty and a balanced budget to a place where we once were. When you think about Ronald Reagan, how he ran this country, that we were proud to be Americans, we were patriotic, that the flags of this country, flags were everywhere. I mean, you drive around anywhere USA now and you're gonna be hard pressed to find a United States flag on a house. And I think the reason for that is because the opposition has made it its mission to destroy the American way. Now, if you've been watching or listening to this show long enough, you know who the opposition is. It is big government who is greedy government who is on the take by the military industrial complex by the pharmaceutical industries and by the by the corporate greedy food conglomerates who will put out the most processed foods to make you sick and fat and stupid and they will pump drugs in you pharmaceuticals to solve issues that could be solved by getting sunlight working out getting your sleep and just being a normal human but they have made anxiety and depression and overwhelm and fibromyalgia and all these things such a big issue that it's become a multi-bazillion dollar industry. And we, the citizens, you, are a walking, talking pincushion for the pharmaceutical company. I mean, let's be honest. We had that pandemic in 2020. They decided to create a vaccine. Everybody everybody was in a hurry to take the vaccine 
And then they said, guess what? You got to take that vaccine for a second time and a third time and a fourth time and a fifth time if you really want that immune system to fight off the coronavirus. Well, that's interesting because in business, in the business that I run, that's called MRR, monthly reoccurring revenue. And if I own a pharmaceutical company, I don't want you to just take one of my shots. I want you to take my shots on a reoccurring basis. And one of the best ways for me to create reoccurring income, membership fees, if you will, a, a monthly reoccurring revenue stream that's going to make my shareholders happy is going to be to bribe the politicians to create bills and laws to force people to take these vaccines every few months. What a great way to pump money into the pockets of the pharmaceutical companies. Yet we hear about what's happening in the world. All of a sudden, young athletes, people who aren't even supposed to be at risk of any kind of heart disease are falling over and dying. No one can explain why. You've seen it on the field. You've seen it on the court. You've seen it on television. No one can explain why. And it only seems to be happening post-vaccine. This level of random dropping and dying didn't take place pre-COVID. So what exactly is happening to America? Have we sold out? If you think that the upcoming election is about Trump versus Biden or Trump and Newsom, it's not. It is literally about saving this country because everything has gotten expensive and you know that. Everything has gotten expensive, yet your income has barely changed. Interest rates are through the roof. The country is divided more than ever. Pride and patriotism in our flag, in our country, is at an all-time low. The national debt is the highest it's ever been. Currently, the national debt is $34.2 trillion. Now, if any of my companies were in massive debt and we weren't able to pay our bills, I would have to file for bankruptcy to restructure my company. Whoever I was in debt to, whether they're bankers or vendors, would come to my headquarters here and shut my business down and take all of my belongings to recover the money from the debt that I owe them. Don't you think this $34 trillion that we owe as a nation to countries like China are soon going to be collected and maybe are being collected now as we sell off giant parcels of land to Chinese nationals and no one bats an eye. No one asks why this is happening. What about the high levels of anxiety, depression, and just the general dissatisfaction that people have for life now? Like, does anyone want to address that? Or are we just going to pretend like it's not happening? That we're all white knuckling through life, living on this edge of when's the bottom going to fall out? I mean, gas prices are through the roof. Food prices are through the roof. We live in a time in America where our borders are so open and porous that they are every week they are finding people coming through the border, our southern border, who are on the watch list. They are on the terrorist watch list. And if every week they're catching some of these guys, how many of them are actually coming in? making it in and becoming these sleeper cells who are one day going to detonate themselves. And why is it okay? Fuck, I'm an immigrant to this country. I'm a foreigner to this country. I escaped the Soviet Union and my family and I came here legally. We went to the American consult in Rome, Italy after escaping Soviet Union. We took the time and effort and did the proper paperwork to legally enter the United States. There is a way to do that. Why are we not doing that? Why have we decided to open the borders? And you see in Mexico that they are just coming in droves to the Texas border. Thousands per day. The border patrol has all but given up to the point where the governor of Texas, Governor Abbott, 
is deploying the National Guard. And what does the federal government say? Hey, you can't do that. You can't shut down the border. And he's saying, yes, I can. Like, we're starting to push the boundaries towards civil war. Why, as citizens, are we okay with this? Why are we okay with billions of dollars being sent to Ukraine to fight a war against Russia when we've got borders that are so porous that tens of thousands of people are entering every day, including those on the terrorist watch list? Why are we so involved in Israel and Palestine when that battle has been going on for hundreds of years and will continue to go on for hundreds of years after you and I die? Why not put that money, time, and effort in controlling the fentanyl crisis? In controlling these homeless encampments throughout all of our big cities across the country? In serving these people who are addicted and getting them into recovery instead of just giving them clean needles and saying, here, take more of your drugs? Why are we not putting our country first like we once used to? What happened? Hey guys, quick interruption to the Bedros Koulian show. I want to remind you about the Truly and Wellness Shot. I created the Truly and Wellness Shot because I wanted a product that was going to help you boost your immune system and fight off inflammation in your gut, in your joints, in your body so that you are healthy, you don't get sick, and you live an awesome life. Truly and Wellness Shots have these nine ingredients that are going to absolutely help fight off inflammation and boost your immune system. Vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, ginger, turmeric, echinacea, B12, cayenne pepper, and black pepper. And every single packet is checked for heavy metals because our ingredients are top quality and we use nothing but top quality because we cut no corners. So you can use my name, Bedros, at truline.com and get 50% off your Truline Tribe subscription. You not only get 50% off your first order, you also get free shipping. You get a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee so that if you don't like the product for some reason, which we have yet to meet anyone who don't like the product, we will give you your money back, no questions asked, and we will shake hands and part ways as friends. And of course, one dollar of every order goes to Shriner Children's Hospital, which is a hospital system that I've been helping and supporting for over 12 years. They provide medical procedures, medical services, surgeries to children whose families can't afford these procedures. So go to Truline.com, use code word Bedros, join the Truline tribe you get 50 percent off your first order and then 20 percent off your recurring monthly orders after that back to the show so if you think that it's about biden versus trump it's not and if you're looking for a president by the way that you could point to and say that's my president great moral compass great character honorable human being you're not going to find that let's not forget that bill clinton got his dick sucked by Monica Lewinsky, an intern, while married to Hillary Clinton, while in office. So if you are looking for some moral compass and some great character and integrity to come from the White House, you're not going to find it. And so if you are going to make your voting decision in November based on feelings and emotions, you're once again going to vote for someone who's going to further erode our country. Here's how I look at it, whether it's Biden or Trump, or if it's Newsom versus Trump, it's the devil you know and the devil you don't know. Now, you might think that, hey, B, uh, you sound pretty conservative. I have a feeling you're going to vote for Trump, and you would be right. I am going to vote for Trump, but I'm not as conservative as you might think. Look, I'm right down the middle. I say we legalize all drugs. And just like we do here in California, we have dispensaries. Let all of those drug sales now contribute to the bottom line in getting us out of debt. By legalizing all drugs, I say we now have a safer and more reliable way for people to access drugs instead of a dark alley or drugs that are mixed with other stuff like bath soaps that's gonna get you to foam at the mouth and go berserk because you don't know what's mixed in it. I say we legalize all drugs, tax them, and then take the tax burden, lower the tax burden 
off small businesses everywhere and off regular wage workers, people who are listening and watching this show. Imagine if you could do that. Let's legalize, fuck, let's legalize prostitution. And if we legalize prostitution, we do the same thing. Now, you're not going to have hookers, prostitutes getting beat up by their pimps. You're going to have some process in place to check for disease. It's going to be a safer environment, both for the John and for the prostitute. And by taxing the fuck out of it, by legalizing it, we reduce the tax burden on our citizens and small businesses who are drowning in so much taxation that they can't turn a profit. And I say, a woman has the right to choose. I'm not liberal. I'm not conservative. I'm a constitutionalist. I'm a common sense kind of guy. And I'm the kind of guy that says, look, it's the devil I know, the devil I don't know. Would I want my kids to look at Donald Trump as a role model? Probably not. Not in every aspect. Would I want them to look at him as a role model, maybe in business? Sure. Would I want my kids to look at Biden as a role model or Newsom or Kamala Harris as a role model? No, absolutely not. I'm the role model for my kids. I get to decide what their core values are. I get to build their character. I get to be the shining example of humanity for them. But if I'm going to pick between the devil I know and the devil I don't know, I'll take the devil I know. Because when you've got someone like Trump in office, we can continue to lower taxes for everyone. We can close our borders and go America first. We will find a way to reunite again. And above all, we will become respected once again by all the nations in the world because it is imperative that America, the United States, maintain its superpower status. Let's face it, any country out there, when the poop hits the fan, you're all looking towards the United States of America to come and help, to ride in and help. Whether it's with money, whether it's with military, whether it's with might. And so if we can't maintain our superpower status because the borders have become so porous, we're in such massive debt, and society has started to fall apart, how then can we serve the world? So you see how it is by design that the opposition wants America to fall. Because if the last free standing nation falls, now the globalists win. And let me give you an example when I say it's not about Biden or Trump. What it's really about is saving or destroying the United States. Look at it that way. Like the vote that you're going to cast in November is a vote between do I save the United States or do I let it continue to erode and get destroyed? It is do I preserve the Constitution or do I allow the Constitution to erode? And by the way, if you're like, B, what are you talking about? Think about this. You've got your First Amendment. It's part of the Constitution. Your freedom of speech. Yet just after the pandemic, there was censorship, wasn't it? There was censorship of all speech. And only a certain type of speech that fit into a narrative was allowed to be heard. That speech was done on a public platform across all social media platforms known as fact-checking. And when you clicked on that fact check link, what happened? Well, some fucking random site that you've never heard of that says this post is not accurate and therefore should not be shared. And then that social media platform decelerates the exposure of that post. And only accelerating the narrative that they wanted to push. For example, in 2020 and 2021, if you said, hey, you don't really have to be six feet apart. There is no science backing that up. There would be a fact check on that post for you 
and then you might be shadow banned, you might be banned, or that post won't have anywhere near the reach that it should. Only for us to find out just a few months ago from Dr. fucking Fauci himself that the six feet social distancing was arbitrary and there's no science behind it. His words, arbitrary and no science behind it. Think about that. Yet people were fact-checked and censored. An active attack on your First Amendment. Here's another one. Just last month, Democrat Edward Markey is attempting to pass a Senate bill, 3589, stating that if you are an American, you cannot practice tactical defense shooting self-defense maneuvers you can't they want to pass that senate bill 3589 so that if you are actively trying to learn how to clear a room how to use a pistol in self-defense like for example if you were to i just watched a video from mike glover shout out to mike glover for bringing this up he says just he goes and by the way mike glover is a former Green Beret, who now teaches through field craft survival, citizens like us, just like my friend Tim Kennedy does through sheepdog response. And Tim also does it through Operation Black Site, a company that I co-own with Dan Fleischman, Michael Chandler, and Tim Kennedy. We teach tactical training so that if you are going to purchase a pistol, you know how to actively clear a room. You know how to draw and present and shoot. You know how to take cover. You know how to conceal yourself. You know how to change out a magazine when your pistol goes dry. All of these things that you would learn, they're trying to make illegal. Guys, it is an active attack on your second amendment, your right to bear arms. And if you don't know the second amendment, let me just give you a nugget. It's about a well-regulated militia being necessary to secure a free state, as in the United States of America, which gives us the right to keep and bear arms. And that right shall not be infringed. So the fact that it's saying the Second Amendment says that we can build a well-regulated militia, which means that we can practice and drill and work together and come together, that God forbid something happen, some disaster, that as men in the community, we can come together and secure our neighborhood, secure our street, secure our city. They want to make that illegal. The preparation of it, the practice of it, the drilling of it, how can that be? It goes against the Second Amendment. So two things right there that I've mentioned goes against the First Amendment, the fact-checking and censorship of your speech, and then this Senate Bill 3589. There's an active attack on the American way. If you think you are voting between Democrat and Republican, you're not. You're not voting between Trump and Biden. You're voting between saving the American way or not. Staying free or selling out to communism in the Marxist way. That's what's happening right now. And let me tell you something. You think that the attack is just on your freedoms and your amendments? It's not. You think the attack is just an open border? That open border does something very, very, very bad for this country. It erodes our sovereignty as a nation. It erodes our sovereignty as a nation. I came here legally through proper paperwork and channels that allow us to come and become a citizen and have a green card and pay our taxes. What is happening to all these illegal aliens coming in undocumented working under the table and never paying their taxes into the country. 
How long is that going to go on before the back of this great country breaks under the burden, under the weight of it all? Or are they just going to keep taxing you and me? Since we can't tax the undocumented, we'll let them work for free under the table, tax-free, and we'll just tax you guys more. That's what's happening. I mean, look at your fucking payroll check. A third of your check disappears. Between the state and federal government, a third of your check disappears. Where does it go to? How's it helping you and your family? How's it helping with the inflation and the higher gas prices? Your higher rent and mortgage? The interest rates that are through the roof? It's not helping you. And if you think the attack is just in that, it's not. The attack is on masculinity. And we've talked about this before. If I wanted to take all the men here in Chino Hills and form a militia before good old Senate Bill 3589 gets passed, maybe I form a militia and then I, I bring Mike Glover and Tim Kennedy and I say, hey, hey guys, will you, will you help train my militia because we are going to go north and we're going to invade Canada and we're going to take over Canada. Well, as men who are going to be prepared, who are going to march north to invade Canada, by the way, lots of love to you Canadians out there. Appreciate you watching and listening to my show. But if I'm going to go invade Canada with a whole bunch of men who are well-trained and armed, I'm not worried about the women and children of Canada. I'm not worried about the elderly and old people of Canada. The only people I would be worried about are the able-bodied men who would stand in opposition against my militia. And so maybe, just maybe, I would take an extra year or two before marching north and I would use media, television, movies, and social media, the radio, and music to soften up the hearts and minds of those able-bodied men in Canada, to declaw them and defame them, call them toxic. Everything that is factory installed in a man to want to acquire, to have ambition, to have strength and courage and honor and mastery, call all of those things toxic and label them as such. To say that what you want as a man is offenseful to the rest of society. And you should be embarrassed of yourself. And imagine I use propaganda through television, movies, TV shows, and I use sports personalities and social media to soften up the hearts and minds of these men. Well, hell, a couple years later, me and my militia could just walk right into Canada and take over without a single bullet being shot. That is what's happening today. A recent statistic that came out said 87% of men here in the United States do not have a single friend that they can call and count on in an instance of a life crisis. How sad and unfortunate is that? That 87% of men don't have a single friend that they can call and count on in time of a crisis. That's unfortunate. That's sad. That breaks my heart. That tells me that the opposition has done a great job dismantling everything that you and I stand for as men. The opposition has done such a great job at it that they've turned you and me against each other. They've isolated men. Those who love the vaccine, those who don't. Those who love Trump and those who love Biden. Those who love cops and hate cops. They've, 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 they've amplified racism. Why is it every four years during an election year, racism becomes a thing? Listen, I didn't watch the Super Bowl that just took place, but I did see some clips and I saw that on the end zone, it said, stop racism. Well, duh, motherfucker, let's stop racism. Like who out there is marching around saying, let's continue to be racists. And do you think by writing stop racism, what the fucking kooks, cucks, clan, or the fuck they're called running around in their mama's bed sheets. You think they're going to be like, oh, well, listen, it says stop racism in the end zone. Fuck it. You know what? 
let's not hate black people anymore. They're not. They're fucked up. They're fucked up. And I think we should be actively seeking them out, arresting them, putting them in jail. But the point of this is that by putting that out there, they're amplifying and separating people by color, by religion, even by, gee, are you pro-Israel or Palestine? How about this, motherfucker? I'm pro-United States. How about that? I'm pro-United States of America. What you going to do about that? Golly, man. So this election coming up, guys, do not let them start stirring your emotions. Like I said, Biden or Trump or Newsom or Harris, none of these people are a shining role model of humanity. But I will take someone like Trump any day who knows how to lead, who gets respect by boom, bang, pow, chang, chow from fucking North Korea and China. That's what we want. We want a president who can be respected by communist countries. Not one like Biden, who's going to allow a fucking Chinese spy balloon to fly across our country. And after finding it, let it float around there for four more days just to gather more data. What the fuck is that about? I want a president who can secure our borders who can lower taxes, who can balance our budget, who is willing to drain the swamp on both sides, Democrat and Republican, and take these motherfuckers who are on the take, who are being greased up financially, expose them and get them out of office. I want a president who is respected by countries who want harm towards the United States because it is only then that we will maintain our status as superpower. Guys, I beg you, I ask you, do not allow media, celebrities, your favorite athlete or your favorite music star to dictate who you're going to vote for. Use your fucking brain. It's the devil you know and the devil you don't know. They're both the devil, but I'll take the devil I know who can run this country and who can get respect and who can get us back on track by helping us become patriots, by allowing people to make some money and restoring freedoms. It is that document, the constitution that makes the United States what it is. And as they try and strip away your rights and freedoms, and you allow them because you think there's no other option. There is, there is, but don't let your feelings and emotions get the best of you. And I got to tell you something here, man, you and I as a voting public have more control than we think. The leader of our country gets to determine what the next four years looks like. But we get to determine who the leader is. And so when I tell you that your mission is self-mastery, your mission, your personal mission is sovereignty, your personal mission is to be a free thinker, your personal mission is to be fit and jacked and rich. Because it is only when you have money, meaning self-mastery, you're a free thinker, you're fit and you're jacked, You're not suffering from self-induced anxiety and depression because you're watching TV all day and screen sucking on social media. It's only then that you're not plugged into the system that is feeding you emotionally and forcing you to make a bad decision. So focus on yourself. You and I We are the voting public. We decide who goes into leadership. Four years ago, we made a very bad decision and we see what happened with this country. We have an opportunity this November to make a better decision. It's the devil you know or the devil you don't know. 
And always remember, man, that you are in charge of your family. You dictate the core values. You are the shining example. You decide how integrity looks like in your family, the, 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 the character, the fiber that you're made of. You really think some celebrity athlete or president should be a shining example? Like, come on, man. Everyone was shocked when Tiger Woods cheated on his wife. What the fuck do you think they do? What the fuck do you think they do? Like you're shocked, but you went and told your kid be just like Tiger Woods. And then when Tiger Woods went and stick his dick in someone else's pussy, you're like, oh my God, I can't believe this. The motherfucker plays golf and he's really good at playing golf. That's it. Like him for golf. But if all of a sudden you're trying to get him to be a, an idol for your kids, you're going to be sorely disappointed. Same with whoever the president is going to be. I want someone who's going to ruthlessly run this country by the Constitution, put America first, care for our sovereignty, and care for the citizens. I personally believe that's Trump. I hope you'll take time to research and see if Trump is right for you. And with that said, remember that average is the enemy, success is your responsibility, and change will take place in an instant if you are willing to flip the switch. I'll see you next time.